where the smoky yard, Bruce smoky as they call it, actually originated was in this village of Buckmithy. But where it came from before that is there are a lot of conjecture, some daft and some uh, sensible. There's a, a, a myth going around about some smokies hung out in a house and the house burns down and the, the, raking through the burning embers and they found these things which they tried and they tasted nice. They thought Arbor Smokies, absolute rubbish was started that way, no, no danger. His history of abroad does say that um, the village itself probably originated in the, the about a year 1000-ish um, and when, when the, the Vikings came here, they brought obviously the processes with them. It stayed fairly isolated. Now whether that's because people didn't move very much, I don't know, but when Achmithi developed as a village, it was dependent on the, on the harbour and the location of the harbour, and Ardroth itself had no fishing fleet, and they were very keen to attract the fishermen to Ardroth, so they gave them incentives of, of land um, and money uh, to settle in Ardroth. By the early 1900s, about 1925, mo most of the fishing boats had gone to Edgrove. And of course, with them went their talents and their skills, one of them being of, of these Smokies, which became Edgrove Smokies. So they started to take them further afield to Dundee and to Perth and as far as Stirling, um, using the train. So as, as, as everything developed, so did the industry develop. And that's how the, the Smoky came to Edgrove and anchored itself there. At one time, we had uh, over 30 small cottage industries at the foot of the tune in our growth, where a uh, husband and wife team would smoke their smokies out the back door. Now, there's maybe only half a dozen. When the industry went through rough times and the fish got a little bit scarce, uh, if they could do anything else, they would do anything else. And so, uh, there's medium-sized companies, there's some large companies, but uh, the main thing is, them that are making that growth smokies are still doing it the same way. This smoky making process hasn't changed over the years. It's still basically done the same way. Uh, the fish are bought on the market uh, direct from the boats. They're first they're the heads taken off them, they're then cleaned, they're then tied, then salted, left in the salt for several hours. The salt and time depends on the fish themselves. The bigger and the fresh they are, generally speaking, the longer the time needing the salt. So you could be for a couple of hours for very small soft fish to perhaps even 24 hours for big fresh ones. It's that much of a wide range. Experience is the, is the thing there. Uh, after the, uh, the, the predetermined time in the salt, the salt's washed off just in clean water and the fish are hung on special shaped sticks. Left to dry for a short period just to dry the skins a wee bit before they go into the fire. The fire itself is a hardwood log fire. A general mixture of hardwoods is okay. Um, I particularly like to get as much oak and beech as I can, simply for reasons of consistency of flavour. Um, a few odd bits of other things through the air, like a bit of ash, a bit of sycamore, wouldn't really affect it, uh, quite honestly. You wouldn't really notice amongst a big batch of fish. Uh, I wouldn't like to burn all of one certain kind of wood. For instance, I wouldn't like to burn a lot of elm, because elm is quite a strong, distinctive, bitter-flavoured smoke. I don't like elm, I don't like the colouring with elm either. But generally, most of the other hardwoods are, are fine. The fish are placed over the top of the barrel, with the fire underneath. The whole lot's covered down with hessian bags, and all the flames then die down, and you have Lots of steam and smoke. The water and the juice dripping out of the fish, landing the hot embers, creating lots of steam and smoke. It's a very, very moist human atmosphere. about the Argo Smoky is just the sort of subtle flavour that it has, you know, it's not an over-smoked, it's just a, a really unique flavour. As an ingredient, it's very versatile, I mean, it can be used in so many different ways. It can bring dishes alive, you know, something like a, a risotto, putting smoky through it, it just sings through, you know, um, using it on its own for breakfast, just simple, with, with butter on it, you know, it's fantastic. I mean, I've done many of the dishes really fantastic dishes and competitions where I've used it in like a, you know, a, a brandad or in a tea an or different things like that and you can get really chefy with it but as I say, you can get great results with doing very little to it as well. I use the Smokey a lot, I've demonstrated it all over the world and everywhere you go, you know, whether it's London, whether it's Paris, as far as South Africa, it's the same response, it's just wow, what is this, you know, what is it, you know, we really are so proud to have it on our doorstep. Arbro Smokey has a PGI status, 
which stands for Protected Geographical Identification. Uh, it's a status which uh, the, the Smokey uh, achieved after my dad's tireless campaigning. Yeah, and he fought for about three years and he wrote virtually the entire spec for the Ardmore Smokey. And the important thing is that it, it is original, it's, it's traditional and it's valuable for that. It's good to have something which will attract people to the town. They can walk around the town and they can see the, the signs that say Ardmore Smokey's here, there and everywhere. And almost everybody that comes to the road on a visit goes to that, some of these people to buy their smoky to take home. And if they take it home with a sticker on them that says PGI, then they know that they've got the real product. So what we're really saying is the wee processor now is, is protected. If he wants to expand his product and take it further afield, then he can do so. And the people that buy it, buy it in the knowledge that it is the original and proper, properly developed product. It is as it should be. And that's something that we don't often get in food nowadays. My own smoky making operation involves me effectively taking Arbor Smoky on the road. Although I can't legally call it an Arbor Smoky, contents and purposes, you know, everything else is, is our growth about it other than the final location where it's made. So they're only called smokies here today. By doing this, taking the smoky on the road, recreating the original process, using the barrels, the hardwood logs and so on, smoking it exactly the way it's always been done, it's allowing people to see this ancient craft that many, many people, unless they come to our growth, I'd never seen before. So in a way, I'm, I feel I'm promoting Arbro Smokey to a much wider audience, and hopefully that's benefiting the whole of Arbro producers. We've got a, a fish shop by the harbour there, and uh, we sell a lot of Arbro Smokies for tourists that would like to come and sit by Arbro Marina and eat an open smoky whilst watching the boats coming in and out. And uh, we also dispatch Arbro Smokies vacuum packed uh, around mainland UK. Currently, we're my website probably can be about 10% of my, my smoky sales. Uh, our Brothians, Red Lichties, who are homesick, get a little bit sentimental about an Arbro smoky. One customer in particular demands a pair every Saturday while he's watching the Scottish football results. And if I, I don't have them to him for the Saturday, he gets quite upset. So yeah, it's the Arbro smoky that people want most, and that's what I'm selling most. Things have changed since the PGI status has been put in place, especially internet sales. They seem to have taken a small lift. Uh, we also have a lot of attention from the celebrity chefs. It's been on Saturday Kitchen, it's, it's been on Jamie. It's, it's really put the Arbor Smoky on the map. It's a good question, what is the enduring appeal of the Smoky? Well, the thing that comes immediately to mind is it's good. It tastes good. It makes you want to come back and do it again. There's so many favourite ways that you can have an Arbro Smoky, and I could really go to town with loads of chefy answers. But to me, straight off the barrel and in some newspaper on a sunny day, that's just bliss. <laughs>